Hi, uh, dear to hear again. Just going to take a look at uh, doing some tasks within uh, the database. So just as a quick refresher, let's take a look at the two tables as they currently stand. So we've got two tables here. It's under the tables heading, looking on the left hand side. We've got our food stock table. So I'm going to double click on that and it'll open up in data sheet view. OK, so it's got our food ID, which was our primary key, which uniquely identified each line or each row uh, within this table. Um, so We've got our food name and we've got our supplier ID. So we can see that our plain flour is being supplied by supplier ID number one. Also, the salt and the pepper is also being supplied by that same supplier. Whereas the apples, the mints, the pears, the carrots and the parsnips are all coming from supplier ID number two. And you're thinking, well, who is supplier ID number two? So I'm just going to close down that table there and I'll open up my suppliers table. So supplier number one is Catering Supplies Limited and the contact is Tom Brown. And supplier number two is Fresh Catering Supplies and it's Mary Smith. So I'm going to close this again here and open up the food stock table. So if, for example, I needed to get more uh, flour and I wanted to think, oh, well, who will I contact? OK, it's number one I'm going to look for. So in the suppliers table, that's Catering Supplies Limited. There's the phone number and it's Tom Brown uh, that I need to, to contact. OK, uh, and so that's the connection between those two, ta uh, two tables. And what we need to do now is officially set up those relationships. So I'm going to close both of these tables. OK, um, and I'm going to use my database tools. So let's click on database tools up the top and I'm going to click on relationships. OK, so there are tables over here that I could add. We're going to add each of these tables once. Uh, so we click on the table and then click on add selected table. Click on the suppliers table and click on add selected table. So we have the two tables uh, in here. Now, all we need to do is uh, I'm going to stretch these out so I can see everything. OK, um, all we need to do is connect supplier ID over here on our suppliers table through to the supplier ID on this one here. So usually it's got the same name and you're taking it from something that has a key and is a primary key on one table through to another field that has the same name but doesn't have a key on the other table. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click, keep my mouse button held down and come across and let go on supplier ID over here. And I know it worked because it says supplier ID here and it says supplier ID over here. So from the suppliers table, it's supplier ID and from the food stock table, it's the supplier ID. That's great. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to tick on enforce referential integrity. So we're going to put in a little tick in there. And what that says is when I'm typing stuff into my food stock table and I type in, uh, for example, I'm going to get some um, lobster and my supplier ID is number three. And then we look in the suppliers table and realize there is no supplier three. We're saying, no, no, we can't be doing that. So if you wanted to have a new supplier, you'd first of all put it into the suppliers table, set it up in the suppliers table, and then, and that might be number three, and then you can go to the food stock table and add in your, for example, lobster or seafood that's all coming from this new seafood supplier. OK, so by enforcing referential integrity here, it means I can't put stuff in the food stock table using a supplier ID that doesn't exist in the suppliers table. OK, and that makes sure that if you have something in the food stock table, you definitely know the details of the supplier in the suppliers table. So that's what that one does. OK, um, and, and click on create. So we now have we know that that's working correctly because we see a one over here and we're saying each supplier ID only appears once in the suppliers table and it's got an infinity symbol on the other end of the line. So it's saying supplier ID can appear lots of times in this in the food stock table, but should appear only once because it's unique in the supplier table. OK, so let's go and take a look and see how this enforcing of referential integrity works. OK, so I'm going to close this view up here. Do you want to save the relationship layout? Yep, yeah, that's fine. Uh, and we go back in. So let's open up our food stock table over here and let's try changing uh, this to number three. Now, we know at the moment we only have two suppliers in. OK, so I'm going to try moving down 
and it says, no, you can't do that. You cannot add or change a record because a related record is required in the supplier's table. And we hit OK to that. I'm going to hit Escape to come out. Uh, so I'm going to go into my supplier's table now and I'm going to add in new and I'm going to go... Put in a CC supplier and I put in all them and we'll have uh, Kim is in here and we should have the phone number um, or whatever and the details in here. OK, so uh, I'm going to hit save on that. OK, and I'm going to close off that table and now I'm going to try putting in a three over here and now it's happy because there is a corresponding three in the suppliers table. So normally when you're setting up relationships, you set them up at the very beginning. And then as you add details to the food stock table, um, it should work in setting up the relationship. Uh, it should work perfectly for you.